talk about this, which I think for me is uh, one of the biggest parts of this whole story that I'm still trying to get my head around. So somehow off the back of all this nonsense that's happened, right? Somehow off the back of this, we've now got this kind of ongoing beef that's now occurring between Ian Connor and flipping ASAP Bari. And, you know, Ian Connor obviously being the guy that's kind of very closely linked with ASAP and ASAP Mob and ASAP Rookie and whatnot. He's got his own brand that he does as well called Sicko. Before that, he had Revenge called Revenge X Storm. Not too sure if he does that still, but still somebody quite linked with that whole world of people. And ASAP Bari, of course, he's the founder um of loan and obviously he's part of asap mob 2 and one of you know all those guys friends and i think you'd remember those two specifically for that famous video of virgil doing some sort of um signing i think for something during fashion week at colette and they're all signing stuff and then Furfus london is there who at the time i guess had some sort of beef with ian connor they're going back and forth in the store ian connor tries to steal or kind of sneak up on Furfus as he's turned his back it doesn't go too well. The security jumps in. Barry, I guess, at that time was going through a beef with Ian Connor. I remember because Ian was kept trying to let him ask him on social media to forgive him. I don't know. Something happened. With, I don't know what happened. Ian, Barry sees Ian Connor try to punch Fiofus London and he goes over to back Fiofus London. And then, you know, or also, it's an excuse for him to basically put his hands on Barry, on Ian, because he never liked him. They end up fighting and it kind of spills over to the outside and whatnot. And this whole, the whole time is happening for whatever reason. Um, you know, but uh, Virgil has his back to the door where this is all going on, and he just keep, keeps on signing stuff like, "Yeah, well, what name did you want?" Like, do you know what I mean, consummate professional. In the midst of all of that, he just kept on his job, kept signing, kept doing what he was doing. And I'm sure after that happened, they all kind of probably said the individual sorries to him to kind of you know make sure that he you know he didn't think it was anything untoward. They just kept him moving. But that was a really funny video you would have maybe seen between all of them. But anyway, off the back of all of that, somehow. Um, he, uh, for some reason, what did what did happen again? Oh, that's how it happened. So I guess somebody shared a DM with uh, it looks like Tremaine, and he's going back and forth. I think maybe with Ian Connor about Barry or something, and um, they say something like, "Oh, because I think at the time I don't know what it was. Something happened anyway, but whatever happened, it got revealed that flipping what's his name, that Barry doesn't actually own Vlone. Are you guys aware of this?" I think this is a flipping screenshot here I'm showing on Twitter from Fashion Demics. Ian Connor exposes that Aesop Barry for getting kicked out of his own brand Vlone. So this whole time, this brand Vlone that's intrinsically think linked to flipping Aesop Barry, like it or lump it, you know it's linked to this short, fat, stubby, bearded guy who wears loads of expensive clothes very, very badly. You know it's linked to him, right? Even if you don't like the clothes, you know it's linked to him. You remember the jacket with a V, the T-shirt with a V, the jeans with all those slashes and shit. You know that kind of style of clothes, right? That kind of trap, um, that trap fashion chic thing that they all have going on where they patch up jeans and put trainers on and weird, all weird colours and patterns all together at once. Loads of boot cut flare jeans, all that kind of good stuff. But he's obviously does it to a really high level. And you always kind of see him going around the, the country doing a pop-up stores and pop-up shops and activations and collaborations with artists for their albums and whatnot. It's become like a well-ordered machine. And again, you just link it to Bari. So to hear this news was to me quite mind-boggling because I had no idea this was true. So because I guess Bari was running around with Virgil, sorry, running around, sorry, with Kanye during this whole ordeal that he's doing where he's spinning out of control, the main Vlone account decided to post this, which says, Vlone is a stamp for creatives who stand and tour and thriving on individuality caring less about conformity uh, that has been governed um, the fashion style of society create your own style rules um just set your own trend and bend your own morale in which you express yourself creatively without limitations in the new era of loan our brand will embrace distinctive creatives who defy the norm and inspire the willing in closing we will not be partaking or irrational behavior associated or related to jabari young lord shelton he has no authority to style himself as mr flown use or license flown this behavior is contrary to our collective so out of the blue it looks like he got kicked out of his own brand you know in the same way that you know john galliano did back in the day or you know alexander mcqueen or whatever we didn't kick out but you know what i mean so that was pretty crazy to kind of see as a revelation happen kind of randomly in the timeline and then of course we got the filings of like the company that owns actual loan basically um attacking a uh, young lord jabari shelton for his use of the trademark which they feel like he doesn't have a right to 
um, which obviously they explain here on Vlone.Grails. It says this suit claims against Jabari Shelton for unauthorized use of the Vlon mark and claims that Shelton has entered into contract to license the mark of the several prominent rap and hip hop performers. And then of course it continues here saying LDV Holdings is registered to uh, but the, oh, it's uh, Hunter Bird or some other person, as you can see there. But essentially, I had no idea that Kai didn't fucking own his own brand, especially some a brand that I feel like, for the most part, doesn't look like it would need excessive investment. Sometimes brands, I feel like, get you know swept. Sometimes brands, I feel like, sometimes you know, designers, I feel like, can get duped into selling off their brand because they're in a tight space or because they are looking to jump to the next level to take their career to the next level. So if you want to do that, and you want to start going global. You want to start maybe expanding into different territories, um, sorry, different areas of design. You want to maybe just change up what you're doing or keep it moving. Getting more investment could actually be a good thing to do. But then, of course, it can end up you having to give away more of the pie. But if you're a brand like Vlone that I feel like, for the most part, doesn't do a lot of manufacturing or R&D in terms of it. I don't know. It's just it doesn't feel like you would need to have that level of investment where you'd kind of you know, sell off the trademark or sell off the license or the intellectual property of it. It doesn't really make any sense. So that's why when I heard that, I was like, fuck, you know, like, you know, you make it probably a lot because, you know, the shirts to manufacture are probably cheap, but then the retail price is super high. So, the you know, the, the markup is crazy, right? You can make a lot of profit off one T-shirt. So the fact that he's had to still raise money is maybe a point for concern. But I have learned through re doing my research that Edison Chen also earns a percentage of loan as well. So it's not always, never really been fully in his control at all in the slightest. But that's pretty nuts to see. And off the back of that, I think there was a really interesting um, tweet that flipping Ian Connor put out because obviously he wanted to put the boot in because he's had a long running beef with Bari. And he's people the following. He said, Bari owes the government $8 million, which might explain why he needed the investment. Sued by LVMH for another, million and is on his last he better make those yay blowjobs the sloppiest he could ever get because his world as we know it is going to come slowly come into a standstill oh and you and how you go from a boss to a mere worker so so as you can see here in Connor's alleging he owes the government eight million dollars in unpaid taxes now that could just be something that he didn't do on purpose because i feel like it happens a lot in the states people of you know or just in business in general people hire accountants and whatnot to do their books and sometimes they end up stealing from them which obviously we've heard the story from fat joe and stuff or they just end up not being really on top of it to the point where you'll start building up and accruing all this money. And usually the government, it feels like don't don't step in when it's a hundred dollars or a thousand. They let it accrue to an obscene level of an amount and then come and collect when they want to collect because they know you have to give it if you want to be a function adult and you want to avoid going to jail or prison and whatnot. So it's a pretty sick game. And then to be sued by Louis v LVMH is a bit weird. I wonder what that's all about. Maybe it's tied into the fashion show you did in Paris back in the day. That was really good i thought i can kind of show that he had the capabilities of maybe doing more but that didn't happen obviously because that happened and then i think soon after that is when the whole video leaked of him slapping that girl's bum in the hotel room who said she didn't want to be touched and it continues says oh and uh, uh, uh. so that was obviously a revelation solving itself right the guy's money so that might explain why he ended up having to sell off a bit of his brand but it's kind of sad to see. I'm not going to lie. Again, if not as I was not a fan of the brand itself, I'm not really the biggest fan of him in general. I don't really care too tough. I just follow him from afar just to see what he's up to. But it's not something that keeps me up at night. But just to see somebody who built something from the scratch, it felt like to then be in a position where it's no longer something that he can call his anymore. And he has to just kind of make do what he has to make do. I think that's really, really sad personally.